In Queensland, they had the Fire and Emergency Services Act, and that, in essence, guides all the fireys in Queensland, their requirements. It, funnily enough, has a different title for its regulation. So it's the Building Fire Safety Regulation, but it is built off the Act. So instead of having the same name, the Act has a different name. The regulation here is not in any other state, and then it has specific requirements in regards to how you comply to legislation. Every other state, and I should get a list together so I can educate people on the particular regulation that looks after, or legislation that looks after fire safety, nine times out of ten, I'm pretty sure, refers to AS3745 Planning for Emergencies and Facilities. So that's their go-to document. In Queensland, there's not the go-to document for guidance. It actually has a law, you know, so the, the regulation. So in Queensland, we have to do the building fire safety regulation. Now, if it's a complex evacuation and there's a, there's a bit of criteria around it to warrant having this particular person of a fire safety advisor, there's a few requirements that need to fall into effect for this particular position to be adopted or it's a requirement to have it. The fire safety advisor then would use other tools like 3745 to create the required systems within a structure for emergencies to be managed. So coming from 3745. So they need to have an emergency planning committee. Okay, so it's a multi-storey building. That can be a person from each floor if you wanted to. If we usually arrange a meeting room for everybody to come to. The emergency planning committee looks at all the how the fire safety system within the building operates. So if it's got a fire indicator panel and the emergency warning and communication system, an EWIS, FIP or EWIS, how does that work? Who needs instruction in it? My go-to was anybody on the ground floor that was a tenant or that was close to the fire alarm and EWIS is I would we'd facilitate their compliance at a reduced or no cost. And their job is to have a nominated person, their reception person or something like that. That would be the chief ward. A lot of people don't realise that there's another structure when you jump out into using 3745 in a complex evacuation, like a big long building or a big tall building, as well as the emergency planning committee, the emergency control organisation needs to be enacted and taught. So that's your warden structure, chief warden, area warden, or deputy chief warden, so on and so forth, down to your communications and first aid officer. Now, if it's a fish and chip shop, well, you don't need all that, but should you still have an emergency planning committee and should you have a warden? Uh, yeah, well, that's what the requirement's saying, so you need to have evidence of that. That's, uh, you know, I quite like the Queensland legislation because any business that's not a complex evacuation, so I'm pretty sure we have a fire safety advisor, it's over 30 people or over 25 metres tall. I've been at FSA since legislation's inception and I've seen the processes and things that go. And I think over time, compliance has waned because of consultation it hasn't been. There are a lot of places I can go into and I can automatically see that it's not compliant. That concerns me a bit because if, you know, fire, for instance, is least likely thing to happen and, of course, could have the potentially the most devastating impact, yeah. Now, that, that's a story for another podcast. Thank you for watching. This short video is part of a longer podcast that can be found on the Safety Out YouTube channel, as well as Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you found this information helpful, then please like, share, and subscribe to see more videos like this one. Also, if you have any Australian and New Zealand workplace and fire safety related questions that you'd like Bruce to answer on the podcast, then feel free to leave a comment below and we'll answer it in the next week's podcast. For more in-depth information and inquiries, you can also schedule a free call with Bruce directly by visiting safetyhut.com.au.